for work, for me, work, for my perspective when it comes to work has shifted over time. When I was just starting my career in 2011, I knew work, okay, we've always worked. Like, let's say you do house chores at home, you help your parents, you go to school and study. That is also work because you're studying to become a better person. You might not be getting a remuneration, but you are putting in the work to end up having a paper or a certificate or a degree or a master's or a PhD to get you where you want to go. So initially, I believed that work for me was going to be the grind, the nine to five grind, whereby I have to go to work, work nine to five and a salary and go home and choose the work, choose, choose the type of work that I enjoy. Of course, all the things I've done in my life, gladly I've been enjoying them. Like I don't say that my parents pushed on me anything that I didn't enjoy. Of course, my mom had that had a hand it by choosing of the subjects that I did in high school to get to university. But I found myself enjoying what I had chosen to do. And my perception was like work is where I'm going to earn a living and establish my life. Fast forward to getting to my work in Uganda when I was working at Uganda Virus Research Institute. I got in very ambitious as a young girl. You're so ambitious. You have all these goals. Then I get to the workplace. I found everyone else lay back a government institution nothing moves you know and the reason why i wanted to go there because i expected to get in and have people to push me because you expect those big organizations have like a great structure when it comes to career progression like you go through in if you enter first year by the time you leave let's say the year year or two later you should be on a different level than how you came in i didn't get that so I got to a point and I'm like, you know what? I don't envision myself doing this bench work because I used to do research, biomedical research, whereby you take people's blood samples, analyze them, find out what they are suffering from, then advise the Ministry of Health to change their treatment in terms of antivirals because I was working on HIV. So I got to an extent and I'm like, you know what, Faith? I don't think if I'm to stay here for the next five years, I'll be like all these other guys I'm seeing because there had been guys who had been there from 1987. I was born in 1987, at the end of 1987, you see? And they had been working in that same place. I've entered there, I'm like 22, 23, 22, 23, I think 22. And I'm seeing these guys that have been there for 20 years. They're still doing the repetitive work of every day. I knew that work was not going to serve me. So to me, my definition of work has always been something that is fulfilling, something that creates an impact, and something that I earned from a living. That was my perception. So I had to leave. I left to go to the University of Manchester to do my master's. I get there. I enjoyed it. I also got involved in the different work the university was doing. I've always been a person who loves outreach. I want to help as many people as I can. And when I learned something, I want to pass it on down to the generation behind me. Because while I was advancing my career, I didn't have that. I didn't have that. Like looking for mentor, you have to do it yourself. Looking for someone to guide you, you have to do it yourself. If you're not doing it, no one else is going to lift you up, you know? So that has always been one of the guiding principles and value that I hold deeply. So I get to Manchester. I do my master's. I'm done with the master's. I'm thinking, what can I do? I always wanted to be a doctor in some way or form. So I'm like, okay, let me get a PhD. So I get the PhD in Australia. I get a scholarship. I moved to Australia to do my PhD. And my PhD was really hard because I had a lot of issues with my supervisors. And I found that they were not really understanding my way of working. I'm a self-motivated person. I love to do things out of my motivation. I don't like people who coerce me to do things. And I also love it when I'm working. Someone should give me the autonomy to think because I have a brain, you know? <laughs> so if someone is not giving me the autonomy to think, I feel I'm caged in because I can't really be expressive. I don't feel like I'm creative. And that's what I faced in my PhD. It was a blow to my confidence. My confidence just tanked. So during my PhD, I kept on wondering, am I really doing the right thing? Do I really need to be here? Those are the questions I used to journal about almost every single day. So I get up, I get almost at the end of the PhD. The PhD is not working because we are at loggerheads with the supervisor. I, I'm the one doing the research. I'm telling them, let's do this. They're saying, no, we can't do that. We don't have the resources. You don't know anything. You know, like there was no belief in me until I got myself a mentor. I attribute most of 
my success for my PhD to my mentor. He sat me down. He's like, you know what, Faith? After you finish this PhD, your life will be totally different when you have that piece of paper in your hand. You know? Just carve in and understand that it's your PhD, right? But let your supervisors do whatever they want to do with the PhD because they've showed you all these three years that your say doesn't have anything. Like, it doesn't matter what you say. So I decided to just do as they did, as they suggested. So I did the PhD, finished it, submitted my thesis, and my life started there. Of course, I had my baby, my son, and when I had my son, we had the we had the pandemic. So I sat back and I kept on asking myself, what exactly do I want to do for work? What work will I be doing to make me feel very, very in line with my goals and also feel accomplished? And I decided, initially I wanted to be a professor. But I was like, you know what? Professor life is not my life. That has to stop. Then I kept on like doing self-discovery in terms of journaling, in learning, just just trying out different things. And I found that I really enjoy translational research. Translational research is whereby you have something that you can translate into either a drug, a treatment, a policy. And it took me time to get a job, of course, because I wasn't taking the traditional route of doing a postdoc whereby you research different research like different aspects of, let's say, virus, because I'm a virologist. I wanted to do the biotech whereby we're making drugs, therapeutics, diagnostics, anything that we use to treat diseases or find out what someone is suffering from or vaccines. It's what I wanted to do. And of course, living in Australia, there are not so many opportunities like that. But luckily, one of them showed up and I applied, I got the job. So I got in. When I got into that place, I thrived. I just felt this was what I was called to do. It, there was never a single day that I went to work and I didn't feel like I needed to be there. Even some days I'll be like, my boss, can we do this? Like my ideas kept on flowing. I was in my own element. I felt fulfilled. And that's what I call work. 